Hi everyone, Elena Uriosti coming to you from the Virtual Benedetti Sessions. For this tutorial, I thought we would go through this amazing new arrangement of Paganini's Caprice number no. 24 as reinterpreted by the Ayub sisters. Before we get into that, I just wanted to mention that I hope you're all working hard, working smart, and balancing that with plenty of self-compassion and kindness. Um, I hope you're going through the warm-up videos every day. There's tons of amazing things to choose from, so I really hope you're taking care of yourself before you start your practice days. Um, if you have any questions at all, I would love for you to reach out to me or write to someone at the foundation. I'd love to answer any questions you have. And if you'd like to tag your practice videos, you can tag them Practice with Elena. All right, so now this Paganini Caprice number no. 24 by the Ayub sisters. I thought because this is a new arrangement, a new piece, um, that this would be a great opportunity to kind of examine and explore the different ways that we can approach learning something for the first time. So this can be a piece that's totally new to the world, like this arrangement. This could be a piece that has existed for many years, many hundreds of years, but is maybe new to you, or even how you come back to a piece after taking a break from it. Um, I am a firm believer um, of adhering to the score first and foremost. So I think that there's a lot that goes into performing and interpreting a piece. We've got the composer, the composer's intentions, or at least the composer's intentions on the document that he left us. That's the music, the printed music. And then as the performer, we've got our own ideas. But I think it's our responsibility to see what the composer has laid out for us. It's like a book. We wouldn't, you know, read a book or a play out loud and immediately change the words. We would, after reading it a few times, maybe decide how we would like to inflect the text, um, but we wouldn't change the material. So I think it's really important just to first and foremost experiment with what's here on the page. And because these are variations, it's such a great opportunity to explore all of the different techniques that are being supplied for us and figuring out really smart, logical ways to practice them. So for this first tutorial on the Paganini, I thought we could go through, the piece is very new to me also, so I'm learning along with you. I thought we could go through each variation, not go too deep into it, but just kind of observe what the composer or the arrangers have provided for us and see how we can kind of sift through that in our own practicing. So as with any piece, first just take a scan, what do you notice? What's the time signature? What's the key signature? Is there a metronome marking? They've given us um, pretty specific metronome markings. What's the vibe of it? If you, can, if you can gather that just from the printed instructions. What are the differences? Different um, bowings, different techniques. Just sort of take a general scan and see what you observe. Nice. There's a lot going on, so we'll go through it now more piece by piece. So the theme of this, probably something we all recognize. We've heard it a million times, so now we get to play it and it's really fun. So let's start with the theme. Um, I am not going to play it at um, quarter note, that's crotchet, equals 100 just yet. I'm just going to take it easy, take it slow test drive the, the, the theme and see what I might want to practice later. So already, what are some things that I can take away? Um, for me, the, for, the strength and the accuracy of the fourth finger is going to be something that I'm going to want to work on. Um, I'm going to want to make sure that my A's and E's are really in tune with my instrument. So maybe I'll tune first. So we're really going to want the A's and E's to ring. That's something I'll want to want to focus on. The articulation is really important. This dot here. 
I'm gonna want to make sure that that's really crisp and then the four following notes are nice and legato. And then when we repeat the theme, it's quieter. So already we are dealing with intonation, articulation, and dynamics. Three very general things, but if I were to make a checklist for myself, which I love doing when I practice, by the way, make try um, experiment with making checklists for yourself. It can be for a full movement, a full piece, or even just one phrase. For me, the theme, um, at least for my first week of practicing, I'm going to want to focus on intonation, articulation, dynamics. So that's the theme. Those, that's a great place to start. Variation one. We've got our little... All right, so what do we have here? For me, what jumps out is the articulation of the left hand. So I might just want to practice that just with the left hand, taking away the bow. Now, I'm not sure yet whether the Ayub sisters will want these um, to be string crossings, in which case we're, go we're going to want to practice putting the hand down. <laughs> So while we're waiting on a decision for that, maybe try it both ways. Once um, going through with the, with the left hand being really crisp um, with both notes on one string. Or you can try it spreading it over two strings. Just so that you experiment, you start to have fun, you start to kind of play with the music. What else here? There's an accent on the last semi quaver, 16th note. Um, of each figure. So we're really gonna wanna um, make sure the bow is distributed so that you have an, enough energy at the end for that little sting. All right, so that is left-hand articulation, bow distribution. So those are two great things that you can add to your checklist for variation one, on top of, of course, intonation, sound, those sort of apply to everything that you're going to play on the violin. Moving on, we're going really fast, we're blowing through this. Variation two. So this appears really heavy. Um, the different markings that they've indicated, we've got these lines, dashes, and then on the upper notes, accents with dots. So how are we gonna make those different? Maybe the lines can be more gluey, maybe the accents can be more separated, a little bit sharper. Again, things for you to play around. This is where the cool intersection of composer and interpreter happens. It's up to you to follow the instructions given, but then also interpret those instructions in a way that makes sense to you and in a way that you can carry across to your listener what you feel the composer intended. So um, I might practice this in blocks so that I could really separate the different articulations. Another block. Another block. You know, and then as you get more comfortable with the material, shorten the spaces in between. And then eventually put it all together. Sorry. And eventually condense the material so that it's in more of a flow and more in rhythm. All right, so that's variation two. Variation three, I see some double stops. We knew it was coming. Um, so for these, I would really make sure that the left hand is secure before we add the right hand. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have to uh, separate the hands when you play, but you want to be able to have each double stop secure, ready to go before the bow. So what do I mean by that? Let's try that again. <laughs>
right? So that the bow, when it meets the string, the left hand is already down. This will be something that's really um, helpful when you are playing three or four note chords, maybe in Bach fugues or in other Paganini caprices. Um, intonation is also a big thing in double stops. So maybe you might want to practice this nice and slowly, legato, calmly, so that you can really establish each sonority of the double stop. Again, making sure the open strings are ringing wherever possible. So intonation is going to be a big one for this coordination of left and right hand, and then finally this repeated down bow motion. So I would do this as slowly as you need to prepare each down bow. So one of the ways I would practice this is playing my down bow, getting ready for the next one, making absolutely sure I'm ready, and then playing. And again. eventually speeding up rather than feeling like oh my gosh I don't have enough time to get to the frog and then something splats or crunches really taking the time in between each stroke to prepare and eventually shortening the spaces in between carefully. Is the sound that you're producing the sound that you want? I feel like with multiple notes, sometimes it's easy to get really frazzled with what's going on rather than listening to the sound that's coming out. So my checklist for this variation three would probably be intonation in a slow legato way, listening to the open strings, making sure they're uh, ringing. Uh, what else did I say? Preparing the left hand so that it's ready when the right hand is there. And then really also preparing the right hand so that you don't make the stroke until you're absolutely sure that it's going to sound exactly how you envision it. Variation four. Oh boy, this is a funny one. So this is meant to, um, uh, this is a nod to the variation in the Caprice where we're playing octaves. <laughs> but the lines are now split between the first and second violins. So as the seconds, we're the, we're the base of the octave, we're actually more important, don't tell the first. We're more important because if our sound is beautiful, if we're really in tune, it's going to make the first violins seem even more impressive. But we'll, we know we get to take the credit. Um, but we have to do this all with one finger, all with a one. So this, I would really enjoy the slide. When you're learning this, don't feel like you need to be in a rush to get to the next note. We really want to practice finding the notes by, I mean, frankly, what I would do is just slide, 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 shift, and when you hear the note, stop. So let's, let's try doing that for a little bit. I might experiment with uh, how depressed my finger is, how far into the string. You might try a little bit lighter. that it glides on top of the string rather than smushes its way up the fingerboard. Um, so yes, for this variation, obviously intonation, I'm, I sound like a broken record, so intonation is probably going to be on your checklist for all of these variations. But for this one, really take your time finding the notes, listening to the slides in between, and um, getting used to moving your one finger in this way that we might not have done before. I don't know about you, but I've never played a piece with all 
ones. <laughs> yeah, so checklist for that one, intonation, slides, um, how much pressure you're using on your first finger, and preparing yourself mentally for being a support system for the first violins. Now we go to variation five. So this one to me looks lyrical, maybe more delicate, but also expressive. How do I know that? Because of the mezzo piano, because of the espressivo marking, because of the longer slurs. So these are all things that I would incorporate into my practicing. Then looking forward, I see some double stop trills. So what's gonna be the issues there? Intonation, double stops, as we talked about in variation three. We're gonna wanna have really articulate fingers um, to make the, the trills nice and electric, lively. So for my checklist here, I might do this um, practicing for intonation first, of course. And by the way, it goes without saying, or it should, um, when we're practicing for intonation, take as many bows as you need. You wanna really be able to hear the pitches that are sounding. intonation for these double stops. to the ring of each note it should every single note should glow it should have a halo around it and then I would practice um, the legato the connecting the bowing the articulation of the left hand Etc. All right, variation six. Now it's getting a little jazzy. I see, what do I see? I see syncopations, I see accents, dashes, changes in dynamic, hairpins, a lot of instructions. So I might break this down really slowly to um, master the rhythm. One, two. Is that right? One, two, three, four, one. Etc. So really mastering the rhythm, um, then adding in the accents, the dashes, the dynamics, making sure I'm on the right bow as they've instructed. Um, yeah, so that one's really a rhythm focused variation. And then we're at the finale. This, this material looks familiar. We've seen it at the beginning. But now it's forte, it's strong, it's gathered up all the energy of the previous variations, plus the improvisation, um, if you're participating in that. And so let's just play through that one. Ooh, something new. Forte piano, tremolo, we can practice that. And then for the end, it looks like we're in major. So let's observe that. Let's reflect that in our articulation and the kind of sound, happy sound, we've made it to the end. We're in a major key. So for this last passage, I see accents, I see triplets, I see I'm going to have to coordinate myself, all things to practice on your checklist. All right, so what's the moral of the story here? A practice checklist. I find this so helpful. I'll write out some, um, some suggestions for you to put in your checklist. 
But one fun thing about learning a piece is you get to go through and decide what the fun challenges are for you. So for me, my challenges, the things that I might want to put on, our, on my checklist include intonation, articulation, dynamics, character, but you might find things that are totally up to you, totally unique to you, and that's wonderful. That's what makes your practice personal. So I can't wait to go deeper into this piece with you. I hope this has given you a good overview and see you next week.